Pages are used for content that usually does not change or that remains static, such as the About Me page, a Contact page, or a Copyright page. Pages can also be used for the index or front page of the site. Pages, by default, don't have categories or tags. They can, however, be placed in a parent-child structure, so you can have pages and subpages. The parent pages can be automatically added to a menu, as discussed in the Appearance Menus video. WordPress pages are stored in a database along with a post. And unlike static HTML pages, they are generated out of this database when a page request is made. The Add New Page screen is where a page is composed. This screen consists of the page editor and attribute boxes that perform different functions that pertain to a page. Some of these attribute boxes are hidden by default. To show these boxes, click the Screen Options tab and check the ones you want to show or uncheck any you want to be hidden. You also have the option of a one or a two column layout. These boxes can also be managed by collapsing or expanding by clicking the bar at the top of each box. In addition, they can be rearranged by mousing over the bar and holding the left mouse key down and dragging the box to a new location and releasing the mouse button. The Enter Title Here field is the title of the page. It's used as the slug in the permalink and it's also the header. If permalinks have not been set from the default, then the Change Permalinks button will activate. Permalinks are detailed in the permalinks video. To avoid 404 errors, permalinks should be set before pages and posts are created. When permalinks have been set, then this button will be an edit button for the permalink. Also, it should be noted that if you move a page to the trash, it's not deleted from the database. So if you create another page with the same name, a number will be added to the permalink. To avoid this, simply navigate to the All Pages screen, click the Trash Filter link, locate the page, and click Delete Permanently. The editor screen is where you type and edit the actual page. It's similar to many text editors with some of the familiar features. These edit features can be expanded or collapsed by clicking the Kitchen Sink button located in the Edit Features. The screen size can be increased or reduced by mousing over the handle at the right bottom corner of the editor. This will activate a double arrow. Hold the left mouse key down and drag this handle to increase or decrease the size of the edit window. There's also a default editor size that can be set in the Writing Settings screen. The editor can be in Visual Mode or in HTML Mode. The visual mode displays a toolbar for this type of editing, while the HTML mode displays quick tags. These quick tags consist of HTML tags that are used in WordPress pages. You can switch back and forth to the different editors to fine-tune your page. A full screen editor mode can be activated by clicking the full screen icon on either the HTML or the visual mode. This will allow a writing page on a larger surface with less distraction. Any movement of the mouse will make the editing features visible. While in visual mode, if you click on the question mark icon, you can view the keyboard shortcuts available for the screen. There's also a word count at the bottom of the editor, and you can toggle back and forth from the visual to the HTML mode from this screen. Clicking the Save button will save the page in draft mode. Click the Exit Full Screen link to return to the Add New Page screen. At the top of the editor is the Upload icon. Clicking on this icon will activate the Upload screen for uploading and inserting media in the page. This can be an image, a video, a PDF file, and other media files. The path at the bottom of the editor gives you information about the HTML element in use. And at the bottom is a word count and the date of the last draft saved by you or the Auto Save function in WordPress. The attribute boxes around the editor may be different than the ones shown here since themes and plugins can add additional attribute boxes. These are the default attribute boxes. The Publish box contains buttons that control the state of your page. One for saving a page as a draft for editing or review. A preview button that allows you to see the page as it would appear on the actual site. This doesn't actually publish the page on the site, it's only a preview. And the Publish button which will publish the site for all to see. Clicking the Save Draft or the Publish button will change the screen from the Add New Page screen to the Edit Page screen. Any changes you made will be preserved. Clicking the Publish button changes the button to an Update button. And only a Preview Changes button remains at the top. The Update button, when clicked, will update the page after any changes are made. 
Click on the Edit link by status and a drop-down will activate. The drop-down will have different selections depending on the status of the page. Selecting any of these and clicking the OK button will change the status of the page when the page is updated. Pending review means the page is waiting for review by an editor prior to publication. Draft means the page has not been published and remains a draft for editing. The status is what shows in the All Pages screen as described in the All Pages video. Visibility is about controlling who can see the page content. WordPress allows you to control the visibility of your pages on an individual basis. By default, all pages are visible to the public. By selecting one of the buttons in the Visibility drop-down and clicking the OK button, you can control the visibility from public for all to see to password protected, where you assign a password that's for that particular page, and when it's posted to the site, this password must be entered to gain access to the content, and private, which hides the content completely from public viewing. Private content is published only for your eyes or the eyes of those who have authorization and permission levels to see the private content. Normal users and visitors will not be aware of private content. It will not appear in any of the links on a site. If a visitor were to guess the URL for your private page, they still could not see the content. You'll only see the content when you're logged into your site and you have the proper permissions. The visibility will change when the page is updated or published. Publish on with a little calendar icon is the date the page was published or the date it will be published. The default is immediate, but this can be changed by clicking on the edit link. The date will show in a series of boxes. The month has a drop-down menu where you can select the month for publication of the page. This can be a future month or a past month to backdate. In the other boxes, simply enter the correct information and click the OK button. This will set the page for a future date or it will put the date you entered in the published link. And if you simply want to trash the page, then clicking the Move to Trash will do the trick. Clicking on the Publish button will publish the page and save any of the changes made to the box and activate the Edit Page screen. The Default Page Attribute box has a Parent Page Selector, a Template Selector, and an Order box. The Parent Selector may not be visible until at least one page has been created. The Parent Selector will list all the pages and child pages. The child pages will be indented. You can nest a series of pages by selecting a parent or a child page from this box. A custom page template can be used for each individual page. Various themes have separate templates with additional features and custom layouts. Templates used here will take priority over the default template for this page. The order is used to list pages in a specific order. This will sort the pages by using the number from this box instead of the date. If you have a large number of pages, then you'll want to start the count with more than one digit, like 0001 for instance. This is useful if you're writing a book or if you have a course that needs to be displayed in a certain order. The featured image is handled differently by different themes. If the default theme is used, it displays an image in the header of the page. You can use different images for individual page, so each will have a unique header. Click on the Set Featured Image and the Media Shadow box will activate. Select a file to use from your computer, from a URL, or from the media library of already downloaded images. Select Show for the image you want. At the bottom of the image screen is a Use as Featured Image line. Click this line. The larger image will be used and cropped to the header size, while smaller images will not be used at all. Header size is discussed in the Header Appearance video. To remove the featured image, simply click on Remove Featured Image. This will cause the default header to activate. The Customs Fields box is used to add custom fields to the post with metadata. This is used by developers and designers in some themes and may require some coding or a plugin to be useful. The Discussion box is where you can override the default as described in the Discussion Settings video. The settings in this box apply to this one page only. Comments can be allowed or not allowed and the same with trackbacks and pingbacks. The slug box can be used as a quick edit to the slug, the end part of the permalink. What you put in this box will replace the slug when the page is published or updated. Remember, all slugs must be unique. The author box provides a list of authors. The author can be selected from this list. Remember to click the Save as Draft or Publish button to save any changes.